Facebook have recently replaced the Power 5 with the Performance 5. The Performance 5 is five elements that Facebook have considered. They say they're data-driven elements that help you get better results if you're a small business. Conceptually, I think they're right, but let's look at each one of them individually. So first off, they're talking about the conversions API. And if you're an e-commerce business or a B2B business, setting up the conversions API so that you're sending your first paid party data back to Facebook has got to be a good idea. So if you haven't got that configured, you definitely need to get that working as, as soon as you're able to. But let me just hover over this so you can see. I'm going to read this out. It says, advertisers with the Metapixel who set up the conversions API saw 13% CPA improvement on average. Now, before I read the rest, um, I'm not a big fan of anything that talks about a percentage because I could say I got 100% improvement by increasing something from one to two. So I could say, hey, I had 100% increase in food today because instead of having one meal, I had two. That's it, that's 100% improvement. So 13% CPA improvement um, would be Okay, if you got that. But when you read the next bit, to me, it's pretty damaging. So it says that the source, it's based on 28 global experiments of direct partner or CAPI gateway integrations between May and August 2022. Now, for me, I'm looking at this from the point of view of Facebook have probably got seven to 10 million advertisers. And they've made this statement based on 28 experiments that ran on direct partner or CAPI gateway integrations over a three month period. So if the best they can do is give you stats from 28 campaigns, that's not a good figure. Let's look at the next one, which is simplified ads. They're actually saying there's a 41% conversion uplift by simplifying the ad sets when tested by the woman's accessories brand, Leela Sadui. So it's 41% conversion uplift based on one advertiser. And there's no context of when they actually ran this campaign. If you click on it, it's a success story that they're talking about using simplified ad sets. I don't have the context of what this advertiser was doing before they actually set up simplified ad sets. I'm a big fan of doing simplified ad sets, but for me, if the, if the best that they can base their criteria on is one advertiser, then I think they can do better. The next up in, in the performance five is broad targeting. So if we look at broad targeting, we can see it says reach more people who are likely to become customers. It talks about a 12% cost per action reduction. So it just says minus 12%. That's a bit ambiguous. They're talking about cost per action, not cost per. So the action could be add to cart, could be initiate checkout, could be view content. We, it's very difficult to know. No context around what the actual action is that they're looking at is. But generally speaking, when we run broad, broad targeting rather than interest-based, it tends to do well, but sometimes it doesn't. And I think that's one of those, your data will be your data and other people's will. Then we move on to mobile friendly video. So with this, it's drive conversions with video ads. So again, let me go back to broad targeting just quickly to show you what they're talking about here. So this is small businesses who use broad targeting in their campaigns, which is location, age, or gender targeting, achieved a 12% lower CPA on average compared to campaigns that did not use broad targeting. The source was internal metadata based on CPA performance for 200,000 web conversion campaigns run by small businesses between August of 2021 and March of 2022. Look at that period of time. That included the tail end pandemic. There's no mention of which countries it was. Is that global? Is that just the US? If it was the US, that figure includes that period of time includes the stimulus checks that were put into the economy for the tail end of last year and did well because there was extra money being thrown around by the government. You're looking at a kind of period of time when broad targeting may not have been the hitting factor. It may have been the stimulus checks that brought about that 12% reduction in cost. So again, I'll just throw that in there and leave that with you. Then in terms of mobile friendly videos, this looks like it's the same period of time Right, so it's probably the same group of people, which is why the, the same 12% is the number quoted, right? Again, this is a bit ambiguous. It says small businesses who use mobile first creative in their campaigns, which is video creative that has a vertical aspect ratio or a duration of 15 seconds or less. So it could be a horizontal video, but the video was less than 15 seconds, in which case they class that as a mobile first 
create. I would consider mobile first to be vertical video, but they've actually said it's vertical video or videos of less than 15 seconds. And then achieved a 12% low CPA on average compared to campaigns that did not use mobile first creatives. And it's the same metadata based on CPA performance for 200,000 web conversion campaigns run by small businesses. Bang. And then finally, I love this one. So they're talking about ad testing. So it says run tests to confidently choose winning strategies. And they're basically saying a minus 30% cost per result with winning A-B tests compared to losing ads. Look at that and go, wow, that would be impressive. But if you hover over the number five, it says winning A-B tests decreased cost per or CPR by over 30% on average compared to losing ads. And it's got source Facebook internal data based on the median performance difference of 747,000 A-B tests run in 2019. Now, obviously 2019 predates iOS 14.5, when obviously all things change from the Facebook ecosystem. I'm looking at that ad testing, that's just completely not relevant. I want to see the kind of the ad testing performance based upon where we are now, not where we were three years ago when things were so much better within the Facebook ecosystem. Again, I'm not saying at all, Power 5 is not a useful thing to do. What I'm saying is you just need to be a little bit careful about reading between the lines when it comes to what Power 5 is or Performance 5, I keep calling it Power 5, I'll probably call it Power 5 forever, but what Performance 5 is and what it benefits it can bring to you. So yeah, by all means, like conversion API, definitely simplified assets, definitely broad targeting, definitely mobile friendly video, ad testing, definitely, but don't just take the numbers that Facebook give you at face value, read between them and formulate your own decisions based upon your own data. So there we go, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then there's a video up here that I would recommend you watch, which talks a little bit about some of the things that you can do with Facebook tracking. I keep banging on about that particular video. The reason I'm doing that is because I think tracking is so fundamental to the success that you're gonna have on it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.